Every Tuesdays in the second round of the program, we find out what's happening in Korean culture and entertainment here on All About K. For this, we have our reporter, Gina, joining us in the studio once again. Gina, hello to you. Hello, hello. Gina, I didn't know you were a big fan of the Olympics. I am. You just like, uh, you talked, we were just talking about archery. <laughs> right. And uh, actually, swimming is happening. We're going to be seeing uh, Hwang son uh South Korea, taking part in the 100 meter uh, freestyle, freestyle. Uh, up soon. And, uh, you know, you were just saying it's so unfair, there's like 50. 50 different, uh, you know, medals up for grab and swimming, right. swimming and only five for archery. Aww. And uh, we've just come up with uh, many different archery competitions yes. that we could potentially add. Mm-hmm. Uh, you said horseback archery. Right. I think uh, relay, mm-hmm. <laughs> relay archery. Right, and have it for like different distances. Oh, that's actually interesting because yeah. you have the set distance, right? right. 70 meters. 70 meters. Mm-hmm. And then uh, everyone's kind of used to that. But to, oh my goodness. That's That'd actually... be so fun. I'd watch it. You go like 30, oh. and then 50, 70, and then 100. Wow. That, that's actually pretty that good. That would be fun. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I mean, uh, certainly the Olympics, I think there's been a lot of worries because the, uh, the you know, the COVID-19 situation. Uh, but uh, once the games have begun, I mean, everyone's getting excited. Uh, a lot of people right now watching the Olympic Games. We saw the archery. We have Hwang Sun Yu right now. We'll give you some updates on this later yes. on. Yes. Uh, but uh, speaking of being red hot these days, not just the archery team, but BTS. Again, another right. week. Another week at the Billboard Hot 100, number one. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. It is. Uh, with the song that they're at number one with again. Right. So it was Butter for seven weeks, and then right. it's Permission to Dance. And just today, it's Butter again. Yeah, okay. So I had expected that it right. was going to be Permission to Dance for a second straight week. Mm. And then maybe, because you know we're like, okay, it could go for weeks again. Right. Uh, but now it's Butter once again. Yes. I heard the radio play is very big for Butter. It is. It has been really good. And also to f- uh, the fact that there's been uh, different remixes right. uh, being released for Butter. But, okay, do you remember what place Butter was when Permission to Dance? Uh, it was wh- seven. Okay, now So they just changed places. How does that happen? I know. Because Butter's back at number one once again. And then Permission to Dance goes down to seven. Yeah, right. I'm telling you, I think uh, the army, they're doing something. They're they are doing really great. Uh, they're doing something right now, right. Uh, too. But again, I mean, you know, I heard that, uh, what is it, uh, Permission to Dance came up with uh, another uh, remix, an R&B remix. Oh, really? I didn't uh, get to hear that yet. I'm telling you, I'm turning into a BTS fan. You are. You're an army now. I, <laughs> man, you know, I thought I was a Blink, uh-huh. which is a Blackpink uh, fan club. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm starting to turn into a, a BTS fan. And so, I mean, the good news is at least they'll, they'll be able to kind of uh, stay in number one, right? Yes. But apparently they also received a very special duty recently as well. Yes, they did. They've been appointed a special envoy for public diplomacy by President Moon. So ah, they'll be fulfilling right. a role of a special envoy for future generations and culture to lead global agendas and to expand diplomatic power in line with Korea's elevated status in the international community and this is a very big responsibility yeah you know this is not the first time that they were at the general assembly i believe they had that speech rm yes which by who by the way rm has the best artist name in the world Rat, oh, really? Rat Monster. <laughs> RM standing for a Rat Monster. I think that's the greatest name out there. But uh, nonetheless, yeah, he had that speech because he's the only one that's kind of fluent in English. Right. And I think they're going to make another speech in September. So it's going to be the 75th United Nations General Assembly. And it's going to take place in New York in September. And they're, I think they're doing a really great job of promoting the global society, uplifting people. And I heard that this could lead them to have a special diplomatic passport. The red one. Oh, my goodness. Which gives them so much privilege. And, you know, truth be told, though, if there are people, you know, again, I, I, there's a lot of the youth out there. They have distrust in politicians and uh, lawmakers out there. But, I mean, who's not going to trust BTS, right? And especially because of the kind of messages that they've been kind of delivering during the pandemic right. has been message of hope. Right. Uh, even before the pandemic, the message has been message of hope, right? which is why they're able to really target a, a, the vast number of youth out there. And I think it's really important. By the way, for our listeners out there, just a little bit of update. I know this is just the, the preliminaries, but uh, Hwang Sun-woo uh, was able to finish second, set a Korean record, 47.97 seconds. That is huge. And so he is going to be moving on to the next round out there. Uh, also, let's talk about, you know, some people like him. Mm-hmm. 
Some people don't. Okay. Be- because uh, you know his movies can get very dark and right. very graphic. Right. But uh, some exciting news about uh, the next Park Chan Wook movie. Let's okay. talk about this. Are you a fan? I am a fan Me of Park Chan Wook. Me too. I like his aesthetics. Yes. You know, because I think a lot of people talk about the gore. Right. But there's so much beauty in the way that it's shot. Right. The, visually. I agree. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of Park Chan-wook. Right. So many people have been looking forward to what he will do next. And apparently the next great work to be produced by Park Chan-wook is announced to be Dong Joja, The Sympathizer. And this will be based on a book by a Vietnamese-American writer who won the Pulitzer for this book in 2016. And it's about a double spy who settled in America. Double spy, I'm already hooked. Uh, <laughs> spy is one thing, but you're a double spy. Right. So the news made headlines a couple weeks ago when it was announced that a huge movie star was attached to its project. It is none other than former Iron Man himself, <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. And I scre- I literally screamed at this news. You're telling me Park chan movie mm-hmm. is going to be starring Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. Right. Uh, this is incredible. Number one, again, a double spy. So I'm assuming that he's going to be playing the role of the double spy. I think he it says that he's going to be the villain oh. in the series. It's a TV series. Oh. So we're going to be seeing him for a lot of episodes. Okay. And he's going to also be the producer of the series with his producer wife. Oh. So he's going to have quite an input in the project. I'm really looking forward to it because I hardly... I think it's been a while since I've seen... Actually, I can't remember the last time I saw him as a villain anywhere. He's I, been the good guy for a while. Well, I mean, especially when you know when you talk about Robert Downey Jr. recently, I mean, you only talk about Iron Man, right? right. And so, I mean, you're not going to call Iron Man a villain. He's mm. a superhero. But you're right. I can't remember. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a cinephile, but uh, again... Robert Downey Jr. And you know what's interesting is because now you have Park chan Wook and uh, Robert Downey Jr. being a very popular actor here in Korea. Right. You're going to get a lot of uh, viewers here in Korea. So definitely some interesting news. We're getting, we're getting some interesting collaboration on the movie front here. Mm-hmm. Uh, sports entertainment. Yes. Uh, we're going to talk about sports entertainment and uh, it's not WWE wrestling. <laughs> uh, we've actually been seeing an increase in sports entertainment programs, Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a new trend these days. Yes, girl power. So there are so many programs these days, such as 너는 언니? I absolutely love that show. I'm Mm -hmm. actually, okay, so again, I think I've said this on the show before, but there's not a lot of celebrities that I follow on a social network. Okay. There are very few. And the two that I follow is uh, 정유인. Yes, the the swimmer. swimmer. Right. I follow her and also... um, who is it? Uh, the defender. Uh, yeah, something Hyunny. What is it? Kim Hyunny or something? Nam Hyunny. Nam Hyunny. There Fencing. you go. Fencing. Fencing. Right. And she's also a caster and uh, Jung Yoon is also yes, a caster right yes, now. Yes, they but both are. I follow both of them. Right. And they're both on Nonun Onni. Yes. So this Nonun Onni program, I really liked it because so many expert pro players yeah. that come on the show and they talk about their career. So they're mostly retired, but sometimes they have guests who are still very in the field. Right. And they talk about their experiences. They give us all these behind the scenes stories and they go on challenges to try out new kind of sports together as yeah. a team. And it's just very, I don't know, it's very empowering. No, it's it's really funny because uh, some of them actually find out they're really good at sports that they've never tried before. <laughs> right. The funniest thing I saw was uh, Nam Hyun and you know, she's very short, yes. very small, and uh, she's actually really good in football. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, she was scouted to another sports entertainment show. Yes, which is my favorite show oh, these it, days. Oh, is that the show that you yes. watch? Yes, no, I watch it religiously. It's called Yes, right? yes, yes. Also, this is a program where there are several teams made of different type of celebrities. So it could be movie stars, it could be models, former sports players or families of former sports right. players. And they're all managed to coach by... 2002 World Cup members. Yeah. <laughs> so this is something else. I mean, they're giving very expert professional tips and training um, knowledge to these now starting out right. football players. And I think what's interesting to see is how much dedicated yeah. these people are at the game. Uh, you know, what's interesting is, uh, you know, you make a very good point because a lot of them are retired. Yes. Uh, for example, like Nam is retired, right? right? But, you know, that competitive edge of being a former athlete is mm-hmm. still there. And so, yes, it's like reality TV, it's entertainment, but like competition is fierce. It is fierce. Everyone is so bandaged up and taped 
they're just giving it their all. They're talking about training 24-7. Yeah. It's very competitive to see. And there are also a couple of golf programs that yes. are... Uh, run, hosted by Park Seri and Kim Myeon, leading Kim Myeon, all these celebrity super golfers. Super Dankong. Right. And yeah, it's just amazing to see so much female uh, players in the sports entertainment programs because uh, it's overdue. Yeah. We should have had these programs long ago. And people were saying it's refreshing to see uh, girls playing football. Yeah, you know, uh, there's another show. I, I don't know the title of this, and I, I probably should be watching this religiously, being that uh, baseball is one of my favorite sports. But there's also the, the women's uh, celebrity baseball team. Really? Uh, they have a show on that. So there's actually a lot. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things that I really thought, you know, I said wow was uh, when I was watching Do Nun Ani and uh, Che Min Jung, mm-hmm. who's the, the former figure skater. Right. She's very young. And, you know, she said one of the things that she really liked about being part of the show was that this is the first time that she was able to be herself. Oh. So as a kid, she was always training to be a figure skater and she was never had... A, a proper childhood mm-hmm. in that where you can just kind of enjoy yourself and let loose. And so she's experiencing it for the first time. That's nice. Being part of this. Right. And, and it's it, it's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's also some uh, sports entertainment program for the guys. I think it's like Donen Oppa. Oh, yes. Donen Bro. Donen Bros. Yes. And a good uh, friend of mine is actually in that. Chan uh, Tepung, who's okay. a retired basketball player. But... Uh, I, this is good. I, I, you know, I'm hoping there's a positive repercussion to these uh, the programs. Yes, I mean, due to how things are right now, it's not going to be as active as people wish. But people are looking to join football clubs in their neighborhood. Yeah. They're trying to go out there and stay fit and healthy. And they are getting out of the stereotype of girls just staying indoors and playing house. They're just ready to go and kick some ball. Speaking of which, Gina, right before the show, I was asking you why you were so tanned. Right. And you yourself are quite an athlete yourself. I am so into tennis these days. I'm just, I'm addicted. Have you started or have you played before? I've been playing for almost a year now. Okay. And it's been on and off given how things were with the pandemic. pandemic yeah. But when it's okay, I go outside and play. And because it's safer to play outside right, than right. indoors, I'm just playing in the heat yeah that's 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 what i told her i was right. like how are you playing in this heat wave right I now i love it it's i think it's very actually empowering to get very sweaty and all spent but it's very recharging the, it's energizing yeah. I, you know the the most workout i've gotten outdoors was walking from my front of my house to <laughs> where my <laughs> to car, car my car is parked and uh <laughs> that uh, 10 meters or so is the the longest it I can wears walk. you out <laughs> <laughs> the heat has been intense, but yeah, it's great uh, that. And, and you know what? One of the things that I really like about this is the fact that it really shows that women can compete yes. sports yes. as well as men. Of course. And I think that's great. And, uh, you know, especially with the Olympics right now, there's a lot of the Olympic craze. And I mm. think, uh, yeah, these are incredible shows. And I hope uh, more people do watch uh, these uh, shows here. Uh, we are going to end on a very delicious note. Uh, I think our radio team will especially like this news, being that uh, this is like the only food they eat. Oh, really? Um, apparently, there's a global obsession with uh, tteokbokki. Yes, tteokbokki, <laughs> one of Korea's beloved street foods, especially in Vietnam right now. So Korean culture has always been big there, but now it's about Korean food. And they it's sometimes not so easy to cook Korean food elsewhere if you don't have the right ingredients. Yeah. But they somehow improvised with rice paper instead of rice cake. Duck, the main ingredient for tteokbokki. Our, one of our writers actually, actually made that. Yes, and she said it was delicious. Is that the trend these days? It is. It's on YouTube. Every oh. every YouTuber well, well, is I mean, trying it. I mean, if it's on YouTube, yes. yeah. Uh, well, it's an easy recipe because I'm not much of a cook. Okay. But I found that recipe to be relatively easy because what you do is just wet the rice paper, mm-hmm. roll it up, and that's your thok right there. Do, does it have the same consistency as? They say it's a little lighter. Yeah, yeah, but I would it, assume it so. It does taste quite similar. And because it's transparent, a lot more transparent than the white rice cake, right, right. it's visually also a little fun. So people have been trying out this recipe everywhere. And yeah, it's been globally getting 
popular. I, you know, I mean, of all the things that could go very popular, right? Uh, you know, tteokbokki. Yes. Uh, because I remember back when I used to live in the the states as a kid. You know, my mom would often make tteokbokki. Right. The, you know, as a kid, right? right. That's the best snack. Mm-hmm. And uh, my non-Korean friends would come over and they'll, you know, they want to try it. And I and warned it would them. Be too hot. I'm like, listen, you, know, you can't eat this, man. It, it's really spicy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh no, it's okay. I'm good with spicy fruit. And of course, they regret it. And, and one of the things my mom started making afterwards is kunjung uh, takbokki. Oh yes, which with is the, the soy, soy sauce, sauce base, sweet and sour. I love it. Right, exactly. And so you know, there are you know different takbokkis. I don't know if there's a lot, but there's you know the two that I could think right. of. But nowadays, rose takbokki is a very big hit. Globally you know, and domestically. You no, know, I was gonna say everyone's been eating that. Everyone has been eating that. I could, you know what? That that you that, haven't tried it yet. No, because it, it's really good. You know, rose happens to be one of my favorite sauces. Okay. I'm afraid that it's gonna ruin it for you. No, I'm afraid that. Oh, I'm you're just, gonna get addicted <laughs> to it and have it every day. Because they're warning that there's so much calorie in that. It's so good. I I didn't know. But I finished like a portion for one or two persons. Okay. And they said it was like 2,500 calories. Yeah, see, that's exactly it. Because I can't just eat one portion. Right. <laughs> but it, it, trust me, it, it was good. Uh, you I already c- know that it's going to be good. I could imagine it being very, very good out mm-hmm. there. But uh, I mean, th- th- the whole idea of this global success of tteokbokki, but this is obviously going to affect the Korean market, right? It is. So people have been hearing about how rice paper tteokbokki has been trending. So they've been trying and we're also loving it. The rosé is a big thing right now. And also because some people who still can't be bothered to cook tteokbokki themselves are making great use of meal kits. Yes. Packaged Everything, you just have to unwrap and heat it up. Yes. So now, that's been popular in Korea as well. Actually, I that's what I had for uh, dinner a couple of days ago. Oh, really? on, on Sunday, my wife decided to uh, cook me some uh, packaged tteokbokki, but mm-hmm. I've been spoiled. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, for our listeners out there, our radio team, they're, they're like tteokbokki experts. <laughs> okay. They know all the good tteokbokki restaurants out oh, there. And wow. so I've, I've been having a lot of these. I, you know, I've never ate this much tteokbokki in my life. <laughs> Working here at Korea now, all I eat is tteokbokki, okay. and uh, my taste buds have uh, really been, uh, you know, spoiled. But nonetheless, mm. it's, it's it's interesting because, you know, we talk about how things go viral, and that's how it impacts the market. But another interesting that went thing that went viral, which I could not have imagined ever, was uh, the dalgona coffee, right? Oh yes, I tried it once and I gave it up. I- you have to stir it for I don't know five thousand times to get the consistency. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't have the patience to I do don't. so. But the fact that something like that went viral, right? And you had a lot of people in the states trying to. Mm-hmm. I had friends asking me to send over those mixed coffees right, in Korea because right. they wanted to try it themselves. I mean, everyone has been stuck at home; they have nothing to do, and something goes viral, everyone wants to try it. I'm telling you, Korean food. Um, it's <sighs> certainly addictive. I mean, no wonder they get addicted to tteokbokki. It's it's beautiful. No, I mean, but because tteokbokki has certain, uh, I guess, uh, taste that makes it so addictive. It, it's it's sweet. Yes. It's salty. Right. And then if you like some spiciness, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's all the things that you need. Right. There's you vegetables, can... carbs. Chewy, it's chewy. Oh. Oh, this is a terrible time to talk about, <laughs> talk about tteokbokki, to be honest with you, especially all our team not having a dinner today. But uh, Gina, this is quite interesting. I don't know what the next food is going to go viral, but uh, the good news is we are going to continue to talk about mm-hmm. how Korean food is making wave uh, globally, right? Gina, as always, fascinating news, very fun topics talked about today. Have a safe rest of the week, and we'll see you again next week. See you next week. You can listen to Korea Now with me, SJ Lee, by downloading the Arirang Radio application, or tune in online by visiting www.arirangradio.com. So make sure you tune in Mondays through Fridays, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Korea time.